The Apostle John's New Testament Revelation Unfolded Section 10 Author's Notes After reading this section, the reader will be left with no doubt that the great beast presented in the New Testament book of Revelation is the United States of America. It will be known that all human beings have the mark of the beast in their right hand and or forehead. There will be no doubt what has caused the human condition upon this earth and the problems that are associated with it. And there will be no excuse to not do what must be done to solve these problems. The book of Revelation holds up a mirror in which the world can view its own reflection. Lost from our memories are our childlike reflections and the remembrance of anything beyond the first light that warmed our eyes in a strange new world. Our birth signaled the beginning of a journey in which our travels would lead us each down a different path. While traveling on these paths, we become lost. We join others on their paths, only to find that theirs is not our own. Once we realize that only our own path can take us where we want to go, we struggle continually to stay on it. But exactly what are we looking for? Are we not searching to find our true self within? Do we not seek to see, once again, the reflection of who we truly are individually not as the rest of the world sees us, but as we saw ourselves before the definitions and expectations of the world consumed our minds and made us into someone we are not? We deeply long to see ourselves the way we saw the carefree child smiling back at us when we first noticed our image in a mirror. As we grow and continue down our chosen paths, the lines of experience begin to crisscross our face like a road map not showing us where to go, but only showing us where we have been. We begin to see the reflection in the mirror as something we are not. Our reality is affected by the illusory image staring back at us, and we become convinced that what we see is who we truly are. These wrinkles are well worn into our face. We see these creases as flaws in our real self, not realizing they were created from the natural course we have followed in becoming what we have become. We have created the wrinkled roadmap by following the path we have chosen for ourselves. In essence, we have caused our own suffering. The causes of human suffering become overwhelmingly real and inexcusable as we look at the face staring back at us, expecting to see the serenity and balance we once knew as a child. The mirror reflects the image of a being created from the passions and propensities of human nature that devour anything in their way. At the same time, our natures motivate us to search for happiness and a confident self-realization that we are equal to everyone else. In this way, we feel secure in what we see in the mirror. No one doubts that the world at large is deteriorating as fast as it is progressing. As we discover new technology, strive for freedom, and connect via the internet, television, and other advanced communication processes, we are uniting unlike any other time in recorded world history. But uniting for what purpose? Never has there been such rampant disregard for human life or the Earth's environs. Life and survival have created a delicate balance between the natural world and the emotional world we have imagined to find our happiness. The Book of Revelation is a masterpiece painted by John the Beloved that reveals the causes and effects of human nature. As with any masterpiece, the artistic expression and medium used by the painter is unique and can only be understood completely by the artist himself. Some of us look at contemporary masterpieces with contempt by comparing them to a child's work. Others look in awe at the colors, contours, lines, shades, and patterns, speculating and imagining the real intent of the artist, thus creating an illusory masterpiece in their own minds. In a similar manner, some see the book of Revelation as a montage of illusionary creatures and situations created from the imagination of a religious Van Gogh, while others, who are unimaginative and uninspired fearmongers, see it as a literal prophecy of future world events because of what they interpret as the world's wickedness. 
John the Beloved wrote Revelation in the early part of the 4th century. By then, he had witnessed human nature from a perspective that could only be drawn from many years of experience living among the different peoples of the earth. John's 2,000 plus years of longevity is implied by Christ's words in the following verses. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter seeing him saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren, that that disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, He shall not die. But, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? This is the disciple which testifieth of these things, and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. John 21 verses 20 to 25 only two means of proof would satisfy both skeptics and believers. One would be John's revealing himself to the public and allowing science to verify that advanced beings manipulated his genetic patterns beings who knew how to use their knowledge of genetic engineering to change the course of human flesh and eliminate aging. The other means would be for a complete and comprehensive explanation to be given of the masterpiece he penned, which is precisely what transpired to produce this book. How else could it be possible to unfold these mysteries, since only John knows why he wrote what he did? Only he knows what each metaphor and figurative expression represents. For as long as the book of Revelation has been studied by apocalyptic and eschatological students and teachers, there have been numerous attempts to unlock the mystery of Revelation. Though many would like to take credit for attempting to reveal its mysteries and John's original intent, all have failed miserably because John was not the source of their information. In contrast, the integrity of this work is maintained, and the claim that the author was taught personally by John himself is substantiated, as this book realizes the purpose for which it was written, to explain exactly what John intended, and to unfold all of the symbolism he used in the presentation of his message. John's intent was to hold up a mirror in which we could each view the image of the creature that we call a human being. John presents the image as a compendium of natural or fleshly desires. These desires are continually burning with fear, hate, discord, strife, and all that fights against the essence of our true inner longings for peace and happiness. The rising smoke from the fires of our fleshly desires stings our eyes, filling them with tears that distort our vision of reality and blinding us to the truth that we, alone, are responsible for providing the fuel for the fire that consumes us. The rising smoke also creates clouds and mists of darkness which shield us from the light of truth. These clouds and mists of darkness have spread throughout the entire earth. No light can be found anywhere. No religions, no spiritualists, no learned ones, no psychics, no popes, bishops, priests, leaders, no gurus or self-proclaimed experts have lit a candle with sufficient illumination to reflect the image. We stare blankly into the mirror. In darkness, self-appointed prophets and teachers have invented religions, theories, philosophies, and illusory imaginations of what the image should look like, soothing the eyes and ears of those who hold them up as torches by which to see. In spite of the clouds and mists of darkness, there has always been a source of light. The sun has never stopped fulfilling the purpose of its creation. It warms and gives life to the earth. But when clouds of darkness prevail, the light of the sun is hidden. However, the earth is not left alone. 
The moon majestically reflects the light of the sun, casting its light upon those who sit in darkness. Only by the light of the moon can people in darkness begin to see their true reflection. Alas, people of the world sit comfortably in houses they have fashioned for themselves houses built upon sandy foundations with no hope of surviving the slightest tremor of a living earth. Inside these houses the people sit in repose, uninterested in the light of the moon. People utilize artificial lights they have invented for themselves to illuminate their darkened state. They have been convinced that they do not need the natural light given by the sun, the moon, and the stars. Nevertheless, the moon is always there reflecting the light of yesterday and portending the light of tomorrow. Though eclipsed by the earth during its different stages, there has always been a moon set in the darkened sky to illuminate a path for those who choose to follow it. The Apostle John was alive when Jesus Christ was upon the earth. Carrying a lamp as he journeyed with Jesus in a darkened land, John filled it with the oil he received from this natural vine. For hundreds of years, he covered his lamp as he lived among the earth's inhabitants. Like a golden candlestick on which a flame still burns after hundreds of years, John's lamp remains lit. It would light the world if it were not hidden among a group of writings accepted by the masses as a source of all truth. It has become known as the Book of Revelation. His lamp is unable to give its light and warmth because of the dark robes and dark suits worn by the religious leaders who stand in front of it, keeping the people from seeing its light. The books of the New Testament were not selected, edited, and collated until hundreds of years after the death of Jesus. John was still alive then, and in disguise, visited those responsible for its canonization. His writings were profound. They gave the editors a different view of Jesus' ministry than that which had been passed down from one generation to the next. John also delivered his manuscript for his revelation to the editors, knowing they would never comprehend its meaning because of the symbolic and metaphorical way in which it was written. In this way, John maintained the integrity of the manuscript for hundreds of years. To truly understand Revelation, we must recognize and acknowledge that with our fleshly desires, we have created the beast the monetary system that perpetuates and assures inequality, poverty, and human misery. We have its mark in our right hands and in our foreheads. We worship its image, we possess the number of its name, and we have created the hell from whence it came. It is time to stand aside, those of you who are dressed in cloaks of darkness, and allow the flame from John's lamp to give its light unto all who are in the house. Christopher This concludes Revelation Unfolded Section 10 Author's Notes.